Hello and welcome to our presentation. My name is Richard Difford and I'm uh, the coordinator of postgraduate studies in the Department of Architecture. I'm also one of the four course leaders for the MA Architecture, which is primarily what we're going to talk about today. As we go through, if you want to ask any questions, um, you can do so uh, through the interface that's provided on uh, the software that you've been given. And uh, the slide you're looking at now gives you some uh, clues as to where you need to find the place to put in your questions. So uh, feel free to enter those at any time. And at the end of the session, uh, we'll do our best to answer what we can. The presentation today is going to cover a number of things. Uh, we're going to primarily, as I say, look at the uh, MA Architecture course and find out a bit more about what it's about. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, postgraduate study more generally in architecture at Westminster. And uh, we'll look at some of the facilities that we offer within the faculty. Uh, we'll also take a more detailed look at the structure of the course. And as I say, at the end, uh, hopefully we'll have some time for some questions. The Architecture MA, uh, as we'll find out, is primarily aimed at being as flexible as possible. In that, so in other words, uh, we've provided all sorts of opportunities for you to study uh, things that interest you and things that will allow you to develop your, on your existing experience and education. And later on, I'm going to talk about that in a bit more detail. Uh, as I say, there are four course leaders, uh, sorry, three course leaders for the uh, MA Architecture. Uh, David Aderu, uh, myself and Samir Pandya, and we each look after a slightly different thread uh, that exists through the course uh, and enables you to specialise on certain uh, areas. But first, a little bit about the context. Uh, there are a number of courses uh, within the Department of Architecture, and we have three, primarily three master's programs. Uh, the Architecture MA, which is the one I'm going to talk about today, uh, Interior Design MA, and the Architecture and Environmental Design MA. In addition to that, we have courses which are about uh, professional qualification in education for registration as an architect in, in the UK. Um, but the master's courses are primarily uh, for people who want to specialise and to look at uh, an aspect of architecture in a little more, more detail. So, first of all, a little bit about the context then. And uh, one of the key things we offer is our location, present, uh, based here in the central London, uh, right in the heart of London. We're very close to a whole series of other uh, institutions and, um, uh, and facilities. Not least, uh, all the museums and galleries, which you find in close proximity. And importantly, also other universities. There are a number of universities within London, and they form, in a way, a kind of a network, which uh, allows us to share experiences and to also take advantage of other lectures and events that are going on around the capital. So it's a very vibrant uh, and uh, dynamic location in which to be. Within Westminster itself and within the Faculty of Architecture and the Built Environment, we have some uh, particular facilities that are aimed uh, exclusively at uh, the study of architecture. And one of the key things is our studio spaces. Having uh, recently refurbished our studios, uh, we're able to provide an environment in which you can both uh, study uh, and engage in tutorials and so on, uh, but also a place to work. Throughout the studios, there are around 100 PCs, for example, where you can sit and work and uh, form part of a, a community. And the studio spaces are shared amongst all the architecture courses within the department. So there's plenty of opportunity to meet with other people and to discuss your work over and above the kinds of things that go on within the actual teaching. Then, of course, there are some particular uh, specialist facilities that are aimed at uh, enabling you to uh, experience new technology and new ideas, and also to develop your work to, uh, the, the best to the best of your abilities. Just recently, we've had a huge investment in new digital um, fabrication equipment, and we have a facility um, based in, uh, in the Marylebone campus that's aimed at exploiting the possibilities that these new technologies present. 
Uh, over the years, the, com the use of computers in architecture has shifted from uh, eff effectively a, a way of um, drawing and producing images to something that extends well into the physical environment and includes the fabrication and making of real components. And some of the tools we have here, CNC uh, equipment, 3D printers and so on, allow us to engage with those kind of things firsthand. And we encourage you to use these facilities uh, and to exploit them in the work that you, you make. One of the most interesting of these uh, new additions is a set of robots. Uh, the opportunities for, for research around these new, um, this new technology uh, is still being explored. And uh, one of the key things about it is that it enables us to think again about the relationship between technology and, and the production of, of artifacts by uh, providing a tool which is universal and can be used in all sorts of different ki kinds of ways. At a more uh, conventional level, there are things like laser cutters and 3D printers which enable you to make models more professionally and to uh, explore some of the possibilities of the larger scale equipment at uh, a smaller and more accessible level. Which doesn't mean, of course, that we're ignoring uh, conventional workshop facilities. Uh, and uh, alongside our fabrication laboratory, are some of the conventional kind of workshop spaces that you might be used to. Uh, we have uh, several different areas within the workshops. There's a space uh, for metalwork, a space for woodwork, which contains uh, many of those conventional tools. Uh, also a wet area for doing clay and plaster and those kind of things. And uh, a space, uh, a spray area where you can work with uh, uh, spray paint and similar kind, kinds of activities that require extract. So there's both a mixture of the kind of new technologies and also some of the uh, conventional craft-based technologies which we would still encourage you to use. This means that students are able to explore these possibilities in their work and a number of pieces of student work which I'm going to show you here uh, have used these tools in various kinds of ways uh, to explore their creative potential. It also means you can make things that actually work, things that are uh, based around uh, mechanics or around the, around the use of the relationship between technology and fabrication. The other key thing about postgraduate experience uh, is that it's quite uh, an individual kind of um, uh, arrangement so that you can um, specialise in something that interests yourself and we offer a range of different teaching techniques and um, possibilities. So alongside conventional kinds of uh, seminar based activities there's also things that allow us to engage with you on a kind of one-to-one -one basis uh, and one of the key things about postgraduate study is that it's, not, uh, it's no longer simply about receiving information and regurgitating it and re reproducing the things that we tell you how to do. It's, an, it's a kind of a discussion. It's an opportunity to work with us to produce uh, some new work. Many of you uh, will probably have been familiar with, con with design education in the past, uh, so you will have you will be uh, familiar with the kind of uh, crit scenario and other kind, kinds of tutorial type, uh, type engagement. And that still forms a key part of our teaching. The master's programs offer, all offer uh, an opportunity to either do a written thesis or a design-based thesis. And in the design work, there's a kind of uh, conversation that goes on throughout the development of your project. Uh, where we bring in external critics and where you can, can show your work at intervals uh, through the process and get uh, guidance and feedback on, on what you're doing. So now a little bit more about the course itself. As I say, one of the key things about it is uh, that it's designed to be as flexible as possible. Uh, so instead of having a fixed uh, set of modules which you can take, a fixed set of, uh, of, of teaching elements, 
Instead, we've designed it in such a way that there are a variety of different ways in which you can negotiate through the course. This allows you to pick things that you're interested in. It also enables you to think about how you're going to build on your existing skills and education and to arrive at something which uh, allows you to position yourself for the future. One of the key things is that the course, uh, the, the master's course, as I say, are very much based around uh, independent study, around your uh, development of your own research within, within the uh, context of the course. So about half the course, the areas which you can see kind of shaded in, uh, in pink there at the bottom, are based around you developing a project of your own choosing. And that means that uh, from day one, uh, we give you guidance in uh, helping you think about the things that you'd like to study, the things that you'd like to work on, uh, so that you're able to position yourself for your future career. Sometimes this is about focusing on something that may have already uh, uh, become interesting to you and you'd like to look at for further and need the opportunity to focus on that uh, and be given support in developing some existing interest. Other times this may be something that comes out of the stuff that we're doing within the course. And uh, from the beginning, as I say, is a kind of conversation with you uh, and an agreement to find something that uh, is suitable for both for the course and for you to develop as a piece of, uh, of research. So that, if you like, is uh, to enable you to reach a level of depth and focus within your work, but there's also an opportunity for breadth, to increase the scope of things that you uh, have encountered, to develop uh, new understandings and gain new knowledge and acquire new skills. And that's where the, the other modules that sit around that thesis uh, are, um, are positioned. Because, uh, as I say, it's aimed, about, it's aimed at providing flexibility, we, we offer a, a choice of different modules which allow you to, which allow you to choose uh, the things that you're interested in. And um, you can see here a list of some of the things that we, we offer. These are also on our, our website and we provide a little bit more detail there about what each of the modules contains. But essentially there are, there are two or three different ways in which you can negotiate your, your, your uh, course through this. You can either literally pick the things that interest you from uh, that list uh, insofar as they fit into the framework for the course, or you can choose to pick uh, a predetermined set of mod modules that will give you a um, a course which specialises in a particular area. So, for example, you could choose to specialise in digital media, in which case, uh, in the first semester, you might take the uh, Programming and Computational Design module, and then in the second semester, you'd take the Sight and Motion module, and together, those two, uh, two modules would define an area of study which would give you uh, a specific award at the end that emphasises your specialisation in uh, digital media. Or equally, for the, for the uh, cultural identity and globalisation pathway, you would choose theories of identity in the first semester and then ethnographic ways of knowing in the second semester. And similarly for the history and theory option, uh, critical issues in the first semester and then uh, city cultures in the second semester. In addition to those uh, modules which define the pathway, there's also uh, an option to take an additional free module which enables you to uh, explore something else that you think might complement those studies or might help you in developing your thesis project. So as I say, a range of different options there. Alternatively, uh, if you just pick uh, uh, the modules that interest you in each, each semester, you um, can still have a kind of a master's course which is, which is uh, tailor-made to your, to your own interests and that would give you uh, the MA Architecture Award without the um, specialisation. 
The thesis then is kind of key to all this. The thesis project is um, almost half of the activity that you're engaged in uh, while on the course. Uh, and it's quite difficult in actual fact to describe exactly what that is because it's an incredibly open-ended and uh, uh, flexible kind of program. You can uh, develop an area of study on all sorts of different things depending on, on where your interest lies, on what your previous experience and expertise are, things you might have studied in the past, can form the basis for moving forward into the thesis project as well as the things that we teach you about within the course. Uh, so, every thesis project is different. Every thesis project is something that uh, the individual student, along with the staff of uh, supporting them, have identified as a suitable area for investigation. And uh, it can be an incredibly diverse set of things uh, when looked at as a whole. Probably the best way of understanding what the thesis project is or what the opportunities are that it presents is to look at past student work and in addition to the um, examples which I'm rapidly running through here there's also the possibility of looking at some of these on our, our website through the end of year catalogues and I'll, a little bit later on I'll, um, I'll give you a link to that so that you can find those uh, and they literally list every thesis project uh, that from every graduating student each year. So you can get a good idea of the breadth uh, of uh, opportunity there and the different kinds of things that people have engaged in uh, within their thesis project. Uh, as a rule, students uh, come to us from a vast range of different backgrounds, from different countries around the world, and we pride ourselves on the fact that uh, we have a very diverse mixture, mixture of students from different different places and sometimes even different disciplines. Uh, the majority of students come uh, from an architecture background but there are also people that maybe have studied uh, art history or um, interior design or furniture design. Other disciplines are also welcome to apply to the course providing that you can show us through your application that you have uh, the right kind of skills. Uh, and on the whole we seem to have satisfied customers. Uh, the uh, examples here are just a few of the things that people have said uh, about the, their experience uh, in recent years on the, on the MA architecture. And I think some of these, uh, the themes that I've been talking about um, earlier on here uh, are reflected in some of these comments. The idea of a kind of community um, of students, the idea that uh, we're in a location that's uh, closely related to other kind of mu to facilities around London, the, lo the, the possibilities of living and working in London, um, but also the fact that the master's course is a, is a chance to learn new skills and also to develop uh, your understanding and conceptual approach to architecture, to find your own identity, if you like, uh, within uh, what is already a very diverse discipline. So, if you're interested in uh, finding out more about what the thesis projects are about, uh, you can have a look at those on the, on the website through our catalogues. Uh, the image shown here is the cover of our last year, year's catalogue. The students uh, work a full year from September through to September. So this is from uh, September uh, 2015, the last uh, cohort that graduated. And uh, in there, as I say, is all, all the uh, thesis projects briefly described from last year, but we also have catalogues from the, part, the previous two years before that as well. So if you're interested in finding out what uh, the students have produced, uh, that should give you a good indication. Okay, um, we've had loads and loads of questions, uh, so I shall do my best to answer some of these. Uh, I'll, before I do, I'd just like to say, if uh, you've got a question here and uh, we don't manage to answer it, please feel free to email myself or one of the other course leaders, if it's specifically about the course. Uh, if it's about the application process, then also feel free to uh, email our uh, course inquiries team, the admissions people here, who will help you with that process. 
Um, so I'm just going to scan through some of the things that, um, that people have been asking. Uh, one of the key things which uh, has come up here, which I think is, although it's sort of an admi ad admissions inquiry rather than uh, specifically about the course, which I think is worth mentioning, is the thing about the IELTS test, the English language test. Uh, we do look for um, uh, an you need to, you to, if you haven't studied previously in English, to provide uh, some evidence of your uh, skill in English. Uh, so there is an expectation that you'll have an average score of 6.5 in the IELTS test. But do, uh, as I say, ask contact our admissions team and um, get some more details on that, because there are various opportunities for doing uh, additional study in English before you start. Uh, the course to bring you up to the standard that you need um, to, uh, to study at postgraduate level. Uh, someone was also asking about when they can apply and the answer to that is well you can pretty much apply any time until the course begins. Uh, they would rather you didn't apply uh, two days before the start of the course in <laughs> September. Uh, the sooner you can apply the better. Uh, but you can actually apply at any time and all the way through through the summer. We don't have a fixed uh, number of uh, students that we take on the course, so we look at it entirely based on merit of applicants. So um, feel free to um, uh, apply at any time. But as I say, the sooner the better. The sooner you apply, uh, the easier it is for us to um, process your application in good time and uh, for you to know also uh, what you're doing so you can you can prepare yourself uh, for coming to, to study with us. Someone's asked here about in preparation for the for the course whether there are any particular um, books or uh, seminars or whatever that should be a, should be uh, engaged with in advance. And well, there, to be honest, there isn't anything specific. Uh, we don't necessarily expect you to have done done anything before you arrive. We, once you're here we provide you with reading lists and we provide you uh, with obviously the kind of teaching that you, you need in order to engage with the course. Having said that, um, pursuing some of your own interests and some of the things that you think you'd like to, to work on and develop further within the course is definitely of value and any preparation that you can make uh, is going to put you in a better position when you arrive. Um, if you uh, have specific inquiries about particular areas of study, because I say the course is quite flexible and covers all sorts of different things, so uh, if there are particular areas that you're interested in, it's probably best to email um, either myself, uh, David Aderu or Samir Pandya uh, and ask us specifically for the, in relation to the particular subject areas and we can, we can give you some guidance. Sometimes people ask if, uh, particularly for something like the digital media uh, pathway, whether they need to come with any particular software skills in advance. Uh, and the answer, once again, is there's no particular expectation that you should have learnt any one particular piece of software or have any uh, one set of skills. We're interested in you as holistically, as a person who, uh, with interests and a range of different skills and abilities, uh, we're not specifically looking for any one set of, of skills, not least because we obviously provide the training uh, and uh, teaching that you need in those kind of things. Um, but uh, you need to be able to demonstrate when you apply that you have the, uh, a, the capacity, as it were, to engage with new ideas and to explore new possibilities within the course. Uh, someone has asked here about software classes, whether um, we offer uh, teaching in various uh, computer skills. And the answer to that is, well, it does depend a little bit on uh, what choices you make within the course. There are various modules within the course which, if you choose them, are specifically about computer skills. And um, uh, the person who's asked this question uh, mentions uh, Grasshopper, Rhino and, and Processing. We definitely have a module that, for example, is almost entirely based around the use of Processing and, and Arduino. Other things like Grasshopper uh, are things that you might uh, 
you use the course as an opportunity to uh, learn more about in, in terms of your own kind of self directed study. Uh, but we also run a number of different kind of ad hoc workshops uh, and events that allow you to uh, get started with those kind of things and to, uh, and to learn more about them. So because it's very flexible, it rather depends on, uh, on what your interests are. But there's also um, particular things that we, we offer to help you. Someone uh, has asked here about uh, studying uh, alongside working. Uh, I think this is a question that comes up quite often, whether or not it's um, possible to work part-time while you're studying. Uh, and the answer really is it very much depends on, uh, on your individual uh, position and other commitments. Generally speaking, though, I would recommend if you're studying full-time uh, that you're probably going to need to put in the equivalent of doing a full-time job in terms of work. You're not going to be here uh, all week long. There's certainly teaching is concentrated as much as possible into a couple of days a week. But for all the modules on the course, there's an expectation that you go away and do your own self-directed study, but also produce the coursework which forms the basis for assessment. Uh, so if you're studying full-time, it will pretty much occupy you full-time. Uh, but we do offer the opportunity to study part-time, so you can uh, do the course uh, over two years. Uh, and uh, in that case, you do the, um, the option modules through the first year of your study, and then you do the thesis in the second year of study. If you're full-time, you do both of those things simultaneously. And studying part-time gives you that bit of extra freedom uh, if you need to be, uh, if you want to be working at the same time in practice, or if you have other commitments which you need to engage with. It's worth warning you, however, there may be visa implications to that if your uh, if your visa is based around your your study. So uh, it'd be best to contact the admissions team and ask them for a bit more information about that. Uh, someone's asked if we have a January start date. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the course actually runs for 12 months from September to September, uh, which uh, means we don't have a January start date. Um, but uh, hopefully if uh, it means uh, you know, there's still plenty of time between now and September to, to apply. Um, and if you, as I say, if you have other qualifications that you're waiting for and so on, do let us know, because sometimes uh, we can still offer you a pay place and leave it conditional on you uh, achieving extra, uh, the extra qualifications that you, you might need. Uh, racing ahead here, someone else has also asked about the difference between the MArch and the MA architecture. Uh, and the answer is they are very different things um, because of the way they fit into the, uh, into the professional qualification structure for architecture in the UK. Uh, one could spend quite a bit of time talking about this, but briefly, uh, if you want to become a qualified architect in the UK, in other words, you want to become a registered architect, then typically you have to go through three courses, each one of which is recognised by the Architects Registration Board and the Royal Institute of British Architects, and they're numbered one, two, three. Uh, part one is a, a three-year undergraduate degree, which uh, gives you exemption from the RIBA part one, and part two of that process is a two-year course uh, called MArch, which gives you the part two exemption. Um, so the MArch course is aimed primarily at people that have already st studied for the part one and are aiming to go on and do part three, which is the professional studies course, and become a registered architect in the UK. And that's a, a two year program which um, combines some undergraduate and some uh, postgraduate study. Uh, the MA architecture, on the other hand, is a academic master's program and it's aimed at people who may be even already qualified as an architect elsewhere, 
uh, or in the UK for that matter, and who wants to specialize and to uh, do some additional research uh, and develop uh, some work in an academic context, maybe as I say, I've said before, expanding your skill set, uh, gaining some new knowledge uh, and new experience. So the MA architecture is uh, not part of the um, professional qualifications in the UK. It's a, a, a separate academic master's program, which allows you to, um, to, to build on your existing architectural education. Sometimes people come and do one of the uh, MA, MA courses or MSc courses in between doing the various stages of their professional qualification, but very often it's people that have already qualified. Um, we don't, because we're not part of the um, RBA and ARB accreditation, it gives us the flexibility to provide uh, something that's much more focused. So rather than the MArch course, which has to provide a very general uh, level of competence, as it were, in, in, in architecture, this is about focusing and specialising. Uh, there's a question here, when do we have to choose the, the type of our final dissertation? Well, the answer is there are various stages at which you make different decisions through the course. There, you don't have to decide anything before you arrive. Uh, once you've arrived on the course, we will provide you with introductions to the options that are available and provide you with guidance through that decision-making process because it's quite different, difficult, I think, um, from a distance to understand what all the options are. So once you're here, we talk you through the various options that are available. Um, in terms of the actual... Uh, thesis, the subject of your thesis, which can be a written dissertation or could be um, a design-based thesis, mostly in actual fact it's, it's design-based work that people choose to do, uh, that develops over a long period of time and that's, that process begins pretty much from the time you arrive, uh, but generally speaking around January time, so a few, few months into the course, uh, you reach a position where you can uh, articulate much more clearly what it is that your, your thesis is about. So there isn't one moment, really, when you decide what your, your dissertation or thesis project is. Uh, it's a gradual process uh, where we guide, which we guide you through and uh, it develops over a period of time. Uh, it's n someone has else asked here if it's possible to enter in the second semester, which I think is similar to the question I was ask, uh, answering earlier about January start. There isn't really a January start, but equally you can't really do the um, second semester without the first semester. So um, that's a kind of predetermined route. Someone has asked about uh, the philosophy of architecture. Uh, and I think whilst uh, the course offers all sorts of opportunities, one of the things that it definitely does is provide a context to look at those kind of more academic kinds of question. Uh, because of the flexibility, you can do all sorts of things. It could be that your project would be a very, could be a very practical kind of project at one end of the spectrum, dealing with perhaps quite technical kinds of questions, through at the other end to something that's very speculative uh, and conceptual. So it rather depends on, on where your interest lies, and we support all of those kind of things. Um, and again, it, a bit uh, like I was saying earlier about the, thesis, the choice of thesis, it rather depends on what you're aiming to do in the future as well. Uh, if, for example, you're looking to go on to, an, uh, to further study, maybe PhD or a, an academic career, you're perhaps more likely to focus on things that are um, more academically oriented, if you like, maybe some more, uh, the more conceptual end of the spectrum. If, on the other hand, you're looking to go into practice, then you may choose a thesis project uh, which enables you to develop certain kinds of skills or specialisms which will enable you to do the kinds of things that you, you want to be doing in that context. So there are all sorts of opportunities available uh, and um, the staff within the course range from uh, people who are uh, effectively um, practicing uh, art historians or uh, architectural historians uh, and also people who've worked in, in practice 
uh, and who have the kind of technical and um, practical skills. So we can hopefully support you uh, in uh, all sorts of different kinds of studies. Someone's asked about work experience to join the course. Uh, there's no expectation that you have any work experience. Uh, in particular, we're more interested in this particular program, we're more interested in your uh, uh, previous education and your academic um, interests. Having said that, uh, work experience can be an incredibly valuable thing as well. So if you have particular experience uh, in, uh, in the workplace, then that's something you can bring to your thesis and uh, may form the basis uh, of the things that you look at within the thesis. Uh, so no particular requirement there, but uh, certainly could be of value. Yes, and someone's asked, uh, just a question just came in, I think, uh, asked if, it's, uh, if the course could be beneficial for part for post part one students who want to go on to do part two? And the answer, obviously, uh, is uh, that yes, it could be beneficial to you. Um, you need to think quite carefully about how it will fit into your uh, education uh, as a whole, and obviously it would add a, a bit of time to your, uh, your education. But in the past, uh, we've had many people who've come to study on our master's programs in between doing part one and part two. Uh, and very often people choose do it as take it as an opportunity um, to help re them reflect on their existing education and to position themselves for the future their future study. So, in other words, thinking about um, what kinds of uh, uh, things they might want to do at, at part two and develop the extra skills they might need in order to do that. Uh, someone's asked about job prospects, which is of I'm su actually surprised that question only came in quite late in the, uh, in the process. It's normally something that comes up um, quite early on. Uh, and it's quite a difficult question to answer, not because uh, we don't help you in, in, in uh, developing your job prospects. Obviously, we'd like to think that the course is of great value to you in, uh, in, your, in terms of your employability. The reason it's difficult to answer is because, once again, it's um, something which is more than simply a product of the course. It's a combination of what you studied before and your previous experience plus the course. So it becomes a kind of value-added thing. And very often, uh, when people have studied architecture previously, they will, after completing the course, they'll go back into architectural practice, taking with them the new skills and the kind of perhaps a broader outlook uh, on architecture and a better sense of their own identity in terms of architectural design. Other times, might, people might come from other disciplines. If you, uh, we've, in the past, we've had uh, students who previously studied, for example, uh, furniture design, or uh, even one somebody who'd previously been a uh, computer games designer who came to the course. And very often, those kind of people are using it as a way of uh, reorienting their career, maybe changing uh, the focus of their um, of their prospects in order to. Um, open up new opportunities for employment. So there's not really, a, there's no one answer really about the kinds of things that people do after they finish the course, but uh, hopefully in one way or another the courses help you uh, in uh, becoming a, a more valuable and in, in employable in, individual. Well, I think I've pretty much exhausted uh, the main points of the questions anyway. There are some other questions which were maybe a little bit too specific to answer in this context. But as I say, if you've got questions that are still unanswered, please feel free to contact us. Email addresses are on the website under the course page for the course leaders, my, both myself and my, my colleagues. Uh, and you'll also find details there for how to contact the admissions team if you have any uh, questions about the admissions process. Thank you very much for listening.